Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special interview segment with one of our sponsors. I'm so glad we got him on. Uh, great guy. Uh, I love when I run into him. He puts a smile on my face. I ran into him at Ace Fraley, and we were talking about uh, doing the podcast like a week before, and he goes, when are you going to get me on? So we've been trying to get him on, and certain things happen, and life happens, and, you know, us old guys, we got things going on. And we forget things. Yeah, and we forget. Yes, we definitely Doesn't forget. Doesn't mean you're not special. <laughs> definitely special when it comes to stuff like this. So, uh, first off, I just want to say thanks, Roger, for coming on. Um, you know, like I said, every time I see you, I uh, get a handshake from you, and I'm usually with one of the kids. Uh, we're at an event, and it's it's always uh, fun just to see you. And um, uh, like it, I said. It's it's too easy to be somebody's friend. I was. I. I hope everybody. Everybody remembers that. You know, the, the time you you're a jerk to somebody, you're not their friend anymore. It's not yeah. worth it. You know. Yeah. The uh, first time uh, we ran into Roger, we were at a uh, Rhode Island Comic Con, and we were standing in line, and uh, he found out that Tom was from uh, the same area, and they got talking, and next thing you know, we were at events together, and you know, it's Did like I sneak you in. I, I think you might have said <laughs> once. Could I least... sneak you guys in? I sneak everybody in. Yeah, yeah. It, good times. So. from Rhode Island Comic Con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Good stuff. Um, so uh, we'll start with Tom. Uh, you know, you know Roger from the area. So yep. hit, uh, hit him up with some stuff, Thomas. All right, Roger. I got a few questions about the record store, if you don't mind. Um, sure. What made you want to open up your own record store? Um, I used to own a tattoo shop, and towards the end of it, uh, everybody gets really tired of of a profession sometimes. Tattoo shop kind of just turned the way I didn't want it to go. So I started buying and selling things. So I, I was buying action figures. I was buying little cars. I was like, like a parent who shut a little kid up for a $3 toy, 100%. So, like, I'd sell... Blue jeans, I'd sell, sorry, I'm at a club right now. I'd, I'd sell all kinds of, like, whatever I could put on a table, I could sell. And I could flip it. But then I started getting into records. And I started to, uh, you know, certain records have value. So after doing the flea market for a couple of years, it, it, it wasn't a flea market business anymore. So I decided to open a store. And um, for the most part, I do okay. I think in life you can get through life if you don't overextend yourself and you don't um, overspend. You know, let it be business or personal. You know. Yeah, so you've you've, you've oh, really outgrown the uh, you've really grown and uh, you've you outgrew the uh, place on Purchase Street, right? Yeah, I I buy too much shit. <laughs> <laughs> stop, so let, sorry, let me, stop. Tom, let me pause you right there. There is a backstory with Roger's love of music. His uncle. Uh, who actually he wrote a book about. Uh, do you want to talk about that real quick, Roger? Yeah, yeah, no problem. If, if it wasn't for him, oh, actually, if it wasn't for my father, I wouldn't be here. But my uncle's, you know, music profession, you know, has brought me a whole different uh, take on life. Is he was a he was the touring and recording drummer for Billy Squire. Right, and there's a book out about that, right, Roger? If somebody wants to buy the book. No, I'm sold out. I don't have oh. any more. Okay. But but at one time, there was a book in case somebody yeah. wants to do a deep dive and pay uh, money for it. Sometimes they come up on eBay, but people want too much money for them. The book wasn't that good. Don't pay a lot of money for it. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you how do you decide what albums to sell, Roger? Is that what you wanted to listen to, or is it, do you go by value, or? Um. Say that one more time. Sorry, it's just loud. How, yeah. how do you decide what albums you're gonna sell? You never know. Like some stuff I have is insane, like super rare, and it doesn't sell. And then somebody will come in for a bread record. Like I, I wish I could figure out what would sell, and I'd actually make money. But it's just um mainly I stay with the whole rock and roll genre. The modern stuff, everything like Nirvana to ZZ Top to Aerosmith, you know, some hip hop stuff like BC Boys and, you know, to the modern pop stuff, the Taylor Swift, the, the Weekend. Um, now that you've done this for a few years, 
what uh what's something that you know now that you wish you knew when you started this all out um don't overbuy like you can always get product if it's used buy it all the time but certain new new items don't overbuy for it because it's always there for you to get and nice. you can get it in a couple of days you know nice and uh Say someone came in and uh, they were starting a vinyl record and they asked you what three albums were must-haves. Do you have three albums that you think every collector should have? All right, so I can't say Billy's Choir. I can't <laughs> say it. <laughs> I guess it would depend on the age of the person. You yep. know, so like an 80s metal kid, Molly Cruz, Shout Out the Devil, um, Van Halen won, and probably Def Leppard Pyromania. Oh, <laughs> nice. No, nice. You know what? Oh, Cinderella Night Song. Like, Fred Curry is like a fan of my band. So if he ever sees this, he'd, he'd yell at me right now. Nice. So, little and side you gotta, note. You got to throw in Kiss Dynasty on that one just for. <laughs> I mean, I love the Love Gun stuff. I like the 80s Kiss stuff. Oh, the, I the do Bruce too. Hulick stuff, real sing songy. Um, some of the '70s kiss is kind of, kind of corny. You know what I mean? A, a little off ball. Like yeah. some of the Van Halen stuff is. I don't want to say it's corny, but it's not like. I like song orientated stuff a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Now I know some people when they have a, a uh, start a business, they like save their first dollar that they have. Do you remember what first your first album you sold was? Oh, Power Trip. Really. <laughs> Yeah, it was a power trip record, and we actually tagged the band, and um, they liked it or something like that. That was the first record at the store on Purchase Street. I remember that. Nice. I, I spent that dollar. It was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, reinvested. You reinvested it. <laughs> yeah. Everything. No. That's. I, I keep telling myself that. I'll keep buying this shit. It's a, it's a good investment, you know? Yeah. Oh, at the store, you don't just sell records, right? You sell T-shirts and uh, video yeah. games and um, CDs, tapes. Um, I buy video games. My cousin does does that hustle, so I flip the stuff to him sometimes. But we, you know, we have T-shirts, sweatshirts, patches, pins. Um, we try to be that nostalgic '80s store that. That I went to when I was a kid, I guess. Yeah, the the old Midland Records in the mall. Yeah, it's just it's fun. You're like, it's like I'm wearing a vest right now, and I, at the show, there's about eight other dudes that like made their vests from my store here, so it's fun. Nice. Yeah, it must be wild going to concerts. I see you post all the time when you're at like the Tweeter Center, and you're you tell people to, uh, and you see people wearing your T-shirts there and stuff. That must be pr pretty cool feeling. I sold a lot of stuff. <laughs> I really have. I, I you know? I'll have to go on record and say, from being a t-shirt guy, you're, I love the t-shirts. The t-shirts are definitely the thing I like the best. I mean, uh, the the parody of it and the whole thing is, oh, you know, the thing I like the most. Nice. I, and um, I only make enough not to get arrested. You got that right. <laughs> you got that right. I love it. No. I'd be no good in jail. I know not only are you a record store owner, but you're a really good drummer and you're in a band. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, about that? And what you got going on right now, Roger, with the band? Because the first time I had ever seen you play drums, it was for opening up for uh, Gene Simmons when he came to the... Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And I thought it was fantastic. I mean, that that whole... even We, we were a cover band at that time. Uh, the band's called All Sinners. And I'm an okay drummer. I always surround myself with better players. Like my singer, this kid, this kid could sing for anybody. He really could. Um, great. Just I've always been a fan of his, uh, Mike Golars, since we've been like 18, 19 years old. Very talented. Uh, Nick Testone, guitar player, um, doesn't know how good he is. Like he just doesn't. Like flawless. The kid plays note for note every time. And then Bruce Morris is my first bass player of all time. So it's kind of it's kind of cool because like we started out like in a basement. We're still in a basement, but like um, the 
starting to play for play with a lot more uh, notable notable bands. We played with Lita Ford the other night. Um, we played with Stephen Piercy, Quiet Riot. We played in New Hampshire. Um, we're up for best new act of New England right now. Um, you, you find us, find our page. You can vote for us if you dig us. But we're um, we we're trying. We're, you know, we're all middle aged. Everybody has. I don't have kids, but like everybody's got kids, and it's hard for everybody to tour and everything else. So mainly, I want to play some big shows with these dudes and have a good time. And and what when we say we're done, we're done. You know. It's, oh, sorry. It. I know you've got a big gig coming up in uh, what is it, New Year's Eve in uh, in Hollywood, right? Yeah, um, we played with LA Guns a couple months ago, and Ace Van Johnson sent a video to the gentleman from the whiskey and the dude dug us. And I get off stage and I see this text. Hey, do you want to play the whiskey New Year's Eve? And I'm like, who's playing a joke on me right now? Like, come on. You know, I mean, that's like opening up for the Pope at the Vatican. That's L.A. Gun, Sunset right. Strip. Like, you don't get much cooler than that. You just don't. You yeah. Know? So yeah. It, it's for life and a big milestone. Like, I mean, who's ever going to be a millionaire? Whoever, who, who else is going to be a rock star? Who, there's not going to be another Nikki Six or another Mick Jagger. But you know what? There's, there's going to be this guy, Roger, when I put my sticks down. I said I did everything I could, I could really do, and awesome. that's what means something to me. Yeah, yeah, really cool. I mean, that's uh, if you grew up in that that time when the Sunset Strip was booming, and if you've seen like uh, Decline of the Western Civilization Part Two, you know how it was with Gazaris oh, yeah. and all those places like that. So to have a chance to be a part of something that was iconic at one time, I mean, what more can you ask for? I just um, it's gonna be able to be cool. Walk in. Um, I used to drum tech for Overkill, so I've been to the whiskey before. And it, just to walk backstage, just to, you know, just be in the area that the history's been made. It's not much cooler than that. It really yeah. isn't. Yeah, very cool. That's a, that's very cool. Uh, you know, if, if people want to find out about how to, uh, you know follow the band or stuff like that, Roger, where can they follow like the tour dates of what the band's got going on on Facebook or do you have an actual web page? We're working on a web page right now, allcentershealth.com. You can go to purchasestreetrecords.com. We have all that stuff on there. And then we have the, um, we're on Spotify and all that platforms. And then we're on, um, Facebook, Park Street Records, and then All Centers on Facebook and cool. Instagram too. I had a when you gave me the CD, I had a chance to listen to it. Really cool. Uh, Tom listened to it also. Uh, you know, it's it's really good. If if somebody likes that genre, and I don't know what style of music you know currently people are into that follow the podcast, but I definitely say if you're a fan of local bands or up and coming bands. I, I enjoyed it. I, I really did. I, yeah, I gave I it to really a guy funny. today. It was funny. I gave it to a guy today. He bought like a striper patch and a rat tape. I'm like, hey, man, you got a CD player? And he goes, yeah. I'm like, here you go. He goes, what's this? I'm like, you just bought that. You're going to dig it. Like, just take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just I getting the it. right person to listen to it, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, my, uh, my son's uh, 12 and he plays guitar and I told him, hey, just listen to this. And he was like, oh, who is that? And I had to tell him who it was. And he thought it was like a classic rock band that I was just trying to get him to listen to. So even like a, a younger person that has an ear for that kind of style of music, they, you know, he he liked it too. So, uh, I, you know, it, it's, if you like that kind of music, you you will really enjoy the CD, my, my personal my, opinion. My friend's wife, he put it on for her in the car. She's like, who's this Bon Jovi? <laughs> He's like, no, it's Roger's band. She goes, come on, it's Bon Jovi. No, so I, I surprisingly, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, like I said, I, I reached out to Tom when I told him we were trying to get you on, and he listened to it, and he, he had the same thoughts yeah. right off the rip. 
the hunted and rise up were my were my two uh favorite songs that i listened to yeah rise up was probably my favorite i, I i'm a fan of the whole thing it has its ups and we're trying to get signed to a label and i want somebody else to pay for it put it out let's see what happens you know when do you sleep? You're doing all these things, man. You're 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 a hustler. You know? <laughs> I I try to. I have four dogs. The house I have to take care of and everything, and I I really try to put effort into into everything equally. I guess you know. Well, you're doing a good job, man. Jeez, that that's all I have, Andy. Do you have anything else? No, I just uh, want to say that I. I... As we're trying to grow this podcast, I want to say I appreciate it, Roger. We, we're trying to, you know, grow a little bit here and there. And uh, thanks for doing the album segment for us. Hopefully we can grow that a little bit and kind of yeah, yeah. send people your way. And, you know, uh, every week we'll, we'll try to, you know, promote as much as we can. I have a question for you guys. Sure. What's, what's your three must 80s record? Oh. If, if you were working at my store on a Saturday... And some young kid comes in and goes, listen, I'm into hair metal. What's the three that I must have? Ah, uh, three hair metal bands. Twisted Sister. It's just one of my favorite bands back, back then. Anything from them. Quiet Riot was another one. And I hate to say it, but my first concert was Def Leppard. So it probably would have been Def Leppard Pyromania. If, if what was Def Leppard was, what show was your first concert? Uh, it was in Providence. I'm trying to think who I'm trying to think uh who the heck what year it was. It had to be around 1990. Was it Queen's Strike? Yeah, I think it was. I think it might have been. Okay. Um or oh, Tesla, gonna... one or the other. Rat no, it was definitely Queen's Right. Okay. I'm gonna go rat out of the cellar. My I, I love that record. I love rat. Um yep. I'm gonna have to agree with you, Pyromania, just because of how much of impact it was even though I, like, I yeah. like high and dry better that's just me um and oh i'm gonna have to say you know because i'm gonna stay away from my my big three of acdc van halen and kiss i'm gonna stay away from those and i'll go the white snake album with all the hits on it uh you know self-titles yeah they were hair band at that time and you can, who doesn't love tony contain on a jaguar oh. <laughs> right right bro she broke everybody's heart yeah oh yeah yeah as and, every uh, as every woman does it happens it's okay it's okay yeah so um what we'll do rogers we'll let you go and uh we're gonna try to put add this to uh this week's episode and i just want to say thanks and uh you know i know you're busy and thanks for uh, coming on and hopefully we can do it again i didn't forget and i thank you guys thanks, thanks roger so much roger we're bye guys have a great one bye see you man